In the previous video, we integrated the register page with the backend APIs. In this video, we will integrate backend APIs for the login page. Here we have email and password fields and register page has username as the extra input field. So we will copy paste most of the code from the register component. From the handle submit method, we can copy this entire code. In this component, we just have email and password, so let's remove username. As we're using await, let's declare this function as async. Now let's add the missing imports. Suggestion is not coming for this, so let's import it manually. Now let's find out what's the API URL for login. So this is the base root. And inside this root, we have slash login root. So the API URL for login will be slash API slash user slash login. And it's also a post request. As you can see it here. Now for the parameters, we don't need to pass a name, we just need an email and password. And as we're not adding any extra property, we also don't need to spread out state here. State is actually an object itself, so as a second argument, we can directly pass state instead of spreading it out. After that, we're just printing out to the console and we're navigating user to home page. Now let's add the missing navigate variable using use navigate hook. Now let's use this error message state variable to display an error. Let's also add class of error hyphen MSG so the error will be displayed in red color. Now for the login button, we need to display the submitting text also. We have everything correctly added, let's verify it now. In the last video we registered a lot of users, so let's use one of them. Let's use Jerry user to login. And password is Jerry at 123. Make sure to remember the password during register, because in database it's stored in hashed format, so there is no way to get the original password back. As you can see, login is successful and we're automatically redirected to the home page. Now let's say, I log in with the wrong email address that does not exist in the database. I added extra S's. If I try to log in now, you can see, we're getting an error user not found with provided email. If I check the network tab, you can see, the displayed error is coming from the backend API. So we're correctly able to display the backend error on the UI. As you can see in the backend code, we're first checking if the user exists, if not then we're sending back the error message. And because we're using error.response object, we're able to access the backend error and display on the UI. Now if the email is correct, 
but the password is not matching and if we try to log in. You can see, we're now getting invalid credentials error. So as you can see here, we're comparing user entered password with the password stored in the database, and if they don't match then we're sending back invalid credentials error. So we're successfully able to log in and register the user. Now, let's enter the correct credentials. If you see the user object from the response, you can see we're sending back tokens array which contains all the tokens for each logged in or newly registered user session. But it's not required to send all the tokens of logged in user. From the security point of view also, it's not good. So let's remove the tokens property from the response. If we open the user model, you can see we have added to JSON method, where we're removing the password from the response. As you can see, password is not sent back in the response. So let's delete tokens property also. Now this tokens property will not be sent in the response whenever we send back user data from any of the API. Now let's try to log in again. As you can see, we're successfully logged in and now the response does not contain the tokens property, which is a good thing. So that's it about this video. In the next video, we will work on maintaining the logged in user session. So once the user is logged in, we will not be showing the login and register menus in the header. And instead of guest here, we will display the logged in user name. We will also add logout button after this welcome guest text, and we will also implement the logout functionality. So that's it about this video. If you found it useful, do like it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.